of Thursday 5 o'clock departure for the U Ottawa men's hockey team. The Gigi's are headed to Guelph, Ontario. In the locker room, equipment manager David Balaki and players make their final preparations for the trip. For the team's American goaltender, Graham Hunt, this weekend's six-hour trip, one of the team's longest this year, is nothing. Play for Corpus Christi, which is in South Texas. Oh, Texas. So uh, we made a trip up to Minnesota on a sleeper bus with stops in uh, Dallas for two games, Kansas, Topeka, Kansas for two games, and then so up to Kansas for 16 hours, and then from there up to Minnesota, we had a showcase where we played four games in about five or six days, and then we flew back. So overall, it was about a two, two and a half week trip. The trip offers players the chance to catch up on homework, take in a movie, or have a spirited game of cards. A quick pit stop in Coburg for dinner, and then it's on to Guelph. It's a late 11 p.m. check-in and a glance around the room shows a collection of the various other places hockey has taken players on this team. Uh, just your routine changes. Um, little things like uh, staying in a hotel room as opposed to you know staying in your own bed. But uh, the level of focus is going to be there for the guys and we're really looking forward to the weekend. It's huge. Going into uh, playoffs, we definitely want to end off on a big note. We want to make sure we have momentum going into them. You got well, we have carrots, good for the vision. I like Bo need that. Some celery, hydration, all good. <laughs> well eaten. Then we got some snap peas, great asset to have. We're here at Ottawa, we promote healthy eating. So we don't need none of that processed food right now. So that's what you gotta do to be a GG. This is life on the road. After a mid-morning breakfast, the team takes a walk, then a nap, and then it's off to London for a date with Western. We've played so well now that we put ourselves in a really good position. They've played pretty bad and put themselves in a really tough position. They are fighting to be in the playoffs. It's sometimes very tough to play against a team that's desperate. Okay? We have to play desperate hockey. That's the way we've been playing, you know, for a while now. Okay? So we can't come out there thinking we're better than what we are. We have to think the game the way we've been doing so far. It's hard work, intensity good team discipline, and, you know, sacrificing each other. Starting. Hunty Nett. Hey. Gabby Duns. Hey. Harris Line. Hey. Let's get it going here, fellas. Jake Harris, an OHL alumnus who spent most of last season with Guelph, would have a weekend to remember. U Ottawa jumped all over their hosts from the start, and soon, a breakthrough. Mike DePaolo does a nice job getting to that one quick, and now Rusk and Polisello are behind the net, coming out in front, and that is a goal. Mitchell Gibson cuts out in front and beats Dodds low on the ice for a goal for the U Ottawa took a one to nothing lead into the first intermission. The visitors continued to press, 
and were rewarded just four minutes into the second. Right side, his shot, high glove side, and he beats Greg Dodds on that one. Antoine Pouliot gives the Ottawa GGs a 2 0 lead. Western Mustangs had that puck in the zone of the Ottawa GGs. Do you see the differences of both teams? At the other end of the rink, Graham Hunt was holding down the fort in the U Ottawa net. That would set the stage for a pretty finish from Cody Drover to make it three to nothing. Despite a pushback from the Mustangs and a drop in intensity on their own part, the GGs see out a 5-2 victory in London. In the dressing room post-game, head coach Patrick Grometre is happy with the win but not thrilled with his team's third period. Okay, big win. There's something special that we've been building. It keeps building on and on and on. I'm really happy for um, Mr. Harris tonight. Good job, Harry. Oh. Even attitude-wise. It's all for the team. All for the team. There's a bit of negative talk. It's 5-1. It's some negative talk on the bench. Hey, this, this, or that. 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 We're a team, we're positive, we're helping each other out. All right? Hard hat award, please. Hey, you guys play good, but hey. Hey, hey. All right. Uh, you know, good game from everyone, and uh, let's rest off and back at it tomorrow. Following the win and an hour trip back to Guelph, it's a late-night pit stop at the Griffin Ice Center to deposit the team's gear. Saturday morning shines bright and early, with the players participating in study hall. It's a good way to keep some balance between the, uh, the hockey and the school. Um, it's always important to stay on top of your studies, and uh, you want to perform very well on the ice, but you also got to perform in the classroom. I'm in business right now, uh, doing some macroeconomics homework. Um, down the road, I, I'm thinking about entrepreneurship. It's, uh, it's a pretty interesting topic for me, and I think it would be a pretty fun way to work. After lunch and a nap, it's off to the film room to study up on Guelph. Make the play off this wall. So this winger here is going to pull and stretch, right? And we're going to try to stretch out their players. They actually get to turn over here because they're D jumps. <coughs> Anthony Brodeur starts between the pipes against the Griffins, one of the hottest teams in Canada. Despite a late comeback attempt, the GGs fall 4-3, to three, and their winning streak snapped at 7.
After the game, hometown boy Brendan Jacome and the team's biggest name, Brodeur, signed some autographs for a local youth hockey team. <laughs> Then, it's back on the bus, and back to business, and the push towards playoffs continues for Ottawa U. Step in front of a runaway train mm -hmm. Just to feel alive again